today we come together to honor the life of Mr. Williams. And these times are never easy, but yet we think about all the good times we had together. We think of the memories and the lessons learned, the wisdom that was shared. Funerals are never easy. I have been to many for my family, friends, and my brothers in arms. Uh, there may be great differences, but one thing always remains the same. Uh, that is pain and sorrow. We must remember that this is natural and called grief. Mr. Williams may be gone, but he will never be forgotten. The time will be different. The time will be different for all of us. But we must grieve. In John 11.35, we see these two words. Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? Because of the loss of his dear friend, Lazarus. This is our Lord grieving the death of his friend, and an example of how to deal with the grief. And it shows us it's natural. Oh, this is Jesus doing the same thing we are right now. And we, we may weep, but Jesus reminded everyone, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 11, 25 and 26. Then in front of a crowd, Jesus commanded, Lazarus, come forth. This is John eleven forty three. And come forth, Lazarus did. Alive and well. This, this is showing the power that Jesus has right here. He didn't... I mean, he rose this man from the dead. And then we go... You know, what, what does it mean for us, though? That answer can be found in John 3.16 and 3.17. For God so loved the world... That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent not his son. Into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him. Might be saved. Just as Lazarus. Was saved by Jesus. We too are meant to be saved. By his agape love. And his sacrifice. You know. We we don't always know how to take it when we're in times of trouble and we're grieving and we just want it to change and wish it didn't happen. We can't. But with this hope right here, this love that Jesus had in his sacrifice, we know that believing in him can bring the dead to life because it did. Those miracles do happen. And for us, bringing the dead to life is eternal life. We see that. With this, I, I'm going to lead in Psalm 23. Because that's an example of the sanctuary that Mr. Williams and ourselves uh, can find and have found in the Lord. Um, it is... The way to walk with him, close to him, trust him. And when we do that in our lives, we found that eternal life and that rising up the Lazarus did. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I would like to take a moment and have everyone bow their heads. Dear Father, I come to you and ask for your protection. I ask for you to extend your hand for all who are grieving. I ask that you guide them through this difficult time and help them persevere. I ask for you to guide Mr. Williams' family through this time as they attempt to put the pieces together and uh, of the divine puzzle which you hold. I ask that you bless these individuals and keep them forever close to you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.